Sakura, how are you? Hello. I'm really good. Early morning. I'm not a very early morning person. I usually wake up about six o'clock, check my social media and stuff like that. If my wife goes to work, then I help like my make make her breakfast and then I go back to sleep again. <laughs> but well, yeah, I'm good. It's good to meet you. Virtually. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, for those who don't know, um, there is a nine-hour difference because I'm in Australia, you're in Scotland, so we have to work out a time that works for us both. And uh, early morning for you and late evening for me it is. Yeah, thanks for uh, submitting that awesome wedding. I had a quick look at it earlier today and I was very impressed with the photos, very cool looking. Um, I don't know anything about it, so why don't you start by uh, telling us a little bit about the wedding and the couple. So, like, I think the reason why I submitted that wedding because it was my favorite wedding last year, and the reason for that was like, all, I like all my weddings, obviously. But uh, the reason for the, the wedding was held at the couple's house. They bought that house maybe a year prior to the wedding, but the, like, it's like a house in the middle of nowhere, which is something I would love to have. And um, they spent like six months sleeping in a tent or like a yard. Uh, uh, in the back garden of the house, and they were renovating it just like with their own hands. So like it was the same with the wedding. Everything at the wedding was like done by them. It was like completely DIY wedding, and it meant so much for to them because you know it wasn't like they just paid someone to do everything, but like they get married in a house that they renovated, you know, and did everything themselves. So like when I got the first email, like and they explained what like what the wedding is going to look like, I was like, yep, I have to do that wedding, and yeah, it was not disappointed. Like. I think the last photo I've taken at this wedding was my, you know, I don't know, like if I look through all my photos, that's the photo that I like the most because it was like them sitting on the, like a front porch of the house, looking in the garden and thinking, yeah, we've done it. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I love that wedding. Hopefully yeah. I'll well, more weddings like that. <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions actually, whether that last photo, whether it was a, a little bit more staged or whether it was just you sort of sneaking up behind them. And no, no. No, it was all actually. They didn't know I've taken this photo. It was oh. I was actually packing my bags, and I was like leaving the house through the back door, and I just like noticed them sitting there, uh, and like I just quickly took one of my cameras out from the back again and took that photo and left. So they didn't know about this photo till I delivered the, you know, delivered the slideshow. Yeah, but it's like if you know what it's about, it's it, like kind of changes everything. So yeah, yeah, I really absolutely. like that photo. Yeah, great. <laughs> Um, and that one was a Scottish wedding, was it? Or yeah, it was like I live in Glasgow, but I don't do that many weddings in Glasgow. Uh, so it was probably one of the closest weddings to me last year. It's like uh, south of Scotland, about two hours drive from my house, uh, not far away from a place that's called Dumfries. So a wedding like the one that you've submitted. Um, sorry, what's the couple's name? Let's start with that. Yeah, it was Emily and Tom. Emily and Tom? Yes. So They're really cool couple, really nice people, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So all my clients are really nice, obviously. But <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> so Emily and Tom's wedding. Um, what's your approach to shooting a day like this? Are you sort of um, do you prefer being the quiet guy that sort of lurks in the background and just kinda of doesn't want to be noticed, or are you perhaps more of an extrovert and you like to interact with the guests and have a laugh with the client and what's what's your approach uh, I would say it's like a I would say it's like a mix I definitely don't show, shy away from people but I also don't think I'm the most important person at the wedding so I don't set anything like I would go maybe as far as I don't know asking the bride to move the chair during the preparation so the light is better or like obviously I will pick up the, the places for like the, the location for the portraits but that's as far as it goes. I would give them some advice, and sometimes I'm like a, let's say, like a timekeeper, because yeah. if you go to a wedding twice a week, you know much more about the weddings than you know that someone that you know who's just getting married. But yeah, I don't, I don't interrupt anything, and like I'm really, really easy going. So I just hope people can see that I enjoy what I'm doing, and if they can see that, then it's much easier for them to work with me, and obviously it's much easier for me to work with them as well. Yeah. So yeah, so. I'm not in, like I'm not invisible, but like, and I, I don't use like long lenses, so I'm quite, quite close to the couple and to the guests. But you know, and I think it's okay as as long as people can see that you're just like a normal guy that's having fun. Yeah. Uh, not like you know who's there like 
and you have like a phase that it's like a punishment <laughs> and you can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> Um, as far as portraits go, like I, I look at these photos and I, you know, they look very natural. They're sort of, they don't look too staged. Um, how do you go about that? Are you sort of, do you prefer just to let the couple interact naturally or do you like to, I, mean, I suppose every couple is a little bit different. I definitely don't post people to the point when I tell them, oh, like, I don't know, move your hand one inch or anything like that, because I think then most of the people, they just become stiff. Uh, like I think it helps that like most of like if you look on my social media or like even on my website, the stuff I show the most is portraits. So my clients, like people who book me, they can expect what we're going to do for portraits. Uh, but they were really natural. They really like, I met them before uh, for the engagement session and they kind of knew uh, what we're going to do. And like, they love the area uh, where they live. So they were actually suggesting uh, what we're going to go for portraits. We had a little bit of, thankfully nothing happened, but there was a lot of, cows around and we nearly had an accident <laughs> but, but yeah like i don't know I, I definitely don't post people like like my I, I don't i also don't use like techniques like trying to get people to imagine i don't know that's uh, i don't know they that's their last day to go or anything like that yeah, i don't yeah. do, use techniques like that for me it's more like i talk a lot so when photographing a couple i just keep constantly talk to them but i don't talk about them being photographed i talk probably a lot of nonsense, <laughs> but you can, uh, I don't know, I think it gets their mind of the fact that they going to be photographed in five minutes and they kind of relax. And I, I tell them as well, I say, guys, okay, I, I, I'm doing this maybe 50 times. So yeah, but it's also, I'm as stressed as you are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know, and, and like, I, I feel that people always relax after five minutes. Like they, they were like fine straight away. Like we actually went for portraits three times, three times, uh, like different lights, different places. But yeah, definitely, I, I would say I direct people more than I post them. Yeah. But like, I, I, I like people when they like, I tell people to cuddle a lot. That's the yes. only thing. <laughs> but that, that's it. So I don't like, I don't like photos when people but far from each other so I like the connection between people yeah. but not to the point when I like you know when it's, when it's something that I would force force on them yeah. you mentioned before that you did an engagement shoot with them um, do you find that it's important to have a strong connection with a couple and by that I mean do you make an effort to try and get to know them uh, meet them before the wedding and I guess for, for certain weddings like a destination wedding may be a difficult thing to do but do you how, how far do you go there? Uh, well, I'm definitely not the kind of photographer who wants to become friends with all with all my clients. Like, first of all, like it's impossible because last year I had 47 weddings, so it would be it would be impossible to like become friends with all my couples. But I wouldn't say like you know I think it's more important for me that they connect with my work than connect with me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so like I do engagement sessions to maybe a third of my couples and uh, like you know it's because like a lot of my couples they're not from they're not from Scotland so it's impossible to do engagement sessions but I meet my couples on uh, on Skype but like still still even like I would say 50% of my couples I see them for the first time uh, during the wedding day but because you know like I have a brochure that talks a lot about my approach and stuff like that and they you know and my website and everything I show is kind of kind of works like, like I want the right couples to book me, but I also want to kind of filter the couples that are probably not a good fit with what I'm trying to do. So yeah, like I wouldn't say I'm really trying to be best friends with everyone, but I want them to to really connect with my work. And the reason for that is, you know, I'm, I'm, I want them to understand that. The, for example, the dress will get dirty at some point, so there's like no issues with that. And like, I, I really, and I'm trying to be quite selective with what I'm like with the weddings I'm booking. So, for example, I very rarely do weddings in the city. Uh, so you know, so then I like, then I know if even if I never met that couple, they kind of like the same stuff as me, and it's easier to work on the day then. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, uh, I guess since the majority of uh, the audience watching these videos and reading the posts um, are wedding photographers. I guess a lot of people would uh, love to hear about some of the technical side of what you do. Can you maybe share with us what kind of gear you use for a wedding like this? 
Yeah, like, well, I'm probably the least technical photographer out there. Like, I'm really not interested in gear that much. Like, I, I use Nikon because it just happened, like, when I bought my first camera, or actually my, uh, like, you know, first, like, digital professional camera, it was just, like, it so happened there was Nikon, and I stayed with Nikon since then. And I photograph with D750s. Uh, like, now, obviously, like, when I have to think about get a bit more, like, the reason I stay with that model is because I underexpose a lot in camera. So, like, some of my photos are nearly like completely dark, uh, so that's what the, one of the reasons I never show the screen of, of the, like the back screen of my camera to the bride because she can never see herself on the photo. Uh, and you know you can bring back shadows a lot in in, uh, in uh, uh, you know with Nikon, so that's the reason. And I, and I I really use like cheap lenses, like I don't know five hundred dollars thirty five millimeter lens, which is my favorite lens. It's not like there's nothing exciting about this lens, but it's really reliable. Like, so I had like few Sigma lenses, and I could never trust them. I would come back off like photos when the couple is like very very small in the landscape, and I would come back from a session like feeling excited about these photos, and I would take ten the same photos in that situation, and none of them would be like sharp. Yeah. yeah so I can, you know. So that's the reason why I, I stayed with uh, Nikon, but I'm not saying like any other brands are worse it's just like if it if it's not broken why should i change it to be honest and one of the reasons for that i think like if i would go to a wedding and i had like six lenses i would think more about what lens should i use now instead of focusing on what's in front of me so this year i might actually like switch to 24 and 58 uh, but we'll see i just basically i like that kind of feeling of the photos when i'm really close to the couples so i would rather photograph like a really nice I don't know, moment with 25 or 35, uh, 24 or 35, instead of like 200 when you can see on the photo, even if it's kind of the same frame, you can see on the photo that you are not close to the action. So, yeah. And like one, one reason I'm using uh, Nikon as well, the 750, because it has a flip screen yeah. and I'm not really tall. So I'm always like holding my camera above my head, looking at the live view. Yeah. <laughs> So, and that's it, like, and like my workflow is really easy as well. I use yeah. like, I have like two presets. I use my, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm a Red Leaf ambas ambassador. So I just have like two presets from them that week to to, to to what I like. And, you know, I did a wedding in like four or five hours. Max. Right. For me, it's more what's the photo. It doesn't really matter that much how you take it. And like the, the the most important thing for me is like I want my gear to be reliable. It doesn't have to be like you know anything. You know, it doesn't have to be like the most expensive lenses or anything like that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. If it's not good enough, you're not close enough. Yes, uh, that's true. Yeah, I like that saying actually. That is cool. <laughs> so yeah, I'm always close. Apart from like in Scotland, really hard when you're doing like. I don't do that many weddings in like chapels or churches, but like last year I've done six, and at five of them I wasn't allowed to move at all. No, so really. I'm, yeah, so I'm now, now like very kind of careful what I'm because I, I can understand what's the most important during that moment, but I also think I've got a job to do, so I'm really careful now with which churches I'm going to because some of them are just the photographer is not allowed to do anything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we've all been in that situation, haven't we? Yeah, uh, I had a few embarrassing moments last, yeah. <laughs> last year. So. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you for your time. Okay, perfect. Keep up the, uh, keep up the awesome work, and I uh, look forward to seeing more of Marek Patsura photography in the future. Yeah, I'm sure we'll meet at some point in I'm person. Sure we will,